Less than 48 hours after American Brad Van Loo sealed victory in the Ocean Sprint 3 of the Velux 5 Oceans Round the World Yacht Race, Zbigniew Kutkowski clinched an incredibly hard-fought second place on the podium. The pole had been pursued relentlessly by British skipper Chris Stanmore Major and Canadian Derek Hatfield, all the way to the finish line off the coast of Punta del Este in Uruguay. Amazingly, each of the three skippers had occupied second position over the last few days. At times they were separated by only a couple of miles, with all three capable of carrying off the second place silverware. Unfortunately for Derek Hatfield, his challenge slipped away slightly over the last 24 hours of racing, with a man from Nova Scotia suffering power problems which affected his navigation instruments. That left Stanmore Major and Gutkowski scrapping hard on the run into Punta del Este, with both skippers fighting to find some good wind in a bid to tactically outwit the other. Since leaving Wellington in New Zealand on the 6th of February, both Stanmore Major and his Polish rival had battled hard against adversity on the 6,000 mile voyage to South America, which included a circumnavigation of the much feared Cape Horn. Gutkowski had struggled with a keel that was busy working itself loose from the hull of his boat Oprah Racing while Stanmore Major was forced to stop for the best part of two days to repair a two-metre rip in his mainsail. That sail damage cost the man from cows dearly, leaving him several hundred miles back from the rest of the fleet. Since that unfortunate setback, Stanmore Major put in a superhuman effort to reel in Hatfield and Gutkowski. So with the holiday paradise of Punta del Este in sight, it was a drag race to the finish, with Stanmore Major and Gutkowski neck and neck with only a few hundred metres to go. Stanmore Major had been out front for the majority of the last 24 hours, but it was to be the Englishman who blinked first, taking a course slightly too close to the rocky coastline, handing victory to his Polish rival. The man nicknamed Gutek crossed the finish line at precisely 16.40 local time, just 40 seconds ahead of Stanmore Major. It was an incredible end to such a dramatic duel after 6,000 miles of hard-fought racing. With second and third place now decided, only one hour after Gutkowski and Stanmore Major completed Ocean Sprint 3, it was Derek Hatfield who sailed into the warm waters off Punta del Este. The Canadian veteran had made a valiant attempt to catch his English and Polish counterparts, but had been foiled by some niggling technical issues. Aboard his boat Active House, Hatfield had gone without sleep for the best part of a week in his pursuit of second spot on the podium. The Canadian may not have achieved the result he wanted in leg three, but there was the consolation of conquering Cape Horn just a few days before. On his last attempt at rounding the infamous Rocky Cape in 2002, Hatfield ended up almost paying the ultimate price when his boat was destroyed in huge seas. With all three boats now heading into port together, it was Zbigniew Gutkowski who reached the wharf at Punta del Este first. Bathed in the Uruguayan sunshine, Gutek's elation at pulling off such an impressive result was plain to see. The man from Gdansk had successfully rounded Cape Horn and made it to Punta del Este with that alien keel, making his achievement and that photo finish all the more impressive. Not long after Gutkowski's boat was safely docked, it was a turn of Chris Stamwell Major to soak up the applause as he headed to terra firma for the first time in over three weeks. Apart from that tear in the sail, the Britain's Eco 60 yacht, Spartan, had proved to be a reliable and formidable steed throughout Ocean Sprint 3, and had at last presented Stanmore Major with an opportunity to show his true pace and ability. So after that epic battle, it was a very tired but happy Gutkowski, who was welcomed ashore by family and friends. You're <laughs> that, that's racing, man. That's racing. It's racing. You were fantastic but, uh, out there. I could not catch you on the beat. End of the story. It's absolutely amazing <laughs> for me. You know, the, the, the this second place is uh, the best. Much better than the, the New Zealand. Much better in the the first in the Cape Town because this is uh, with the fighting. You know, fighting, 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 and I win. So this is like uh, it's incredible. I feel like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm really proud. Three minutes before the finish line, three minutes before the finish line, I know I gonna be first. I gonna be first. So.
I saw him around 11 o'clock this morning um, crossing my bows a mile distant and as I flicked onto the tack to follow him he was ahead of me and he's, he's sailing that boat out of his skin it's incredible and I think my boat's a little bit lighter than his it's certainly a little bit newer but um, he, he came up to windward I just could not catch him at all but um, as he came up the next part of his plan was to crack sheets and kind of go into a reach and that's what Spartan does best and as soon as he did that we, uh, we got the big Solent on the go and that full main and uh, suddenly we were up to 13 and a half, 14 knots and we chased him down very very quickly and that continued right into here and I had about a five or six boat lead on him and everything was looking really very very good but um, coming into here the lighthouse which is one end of our mark there's a patch of rocks just off it and I looked at the nav and I knew it was there and I knew I was going to take a tight line past it but um, I just got myself too close and it's, uh, it's an error on my behalf I should have just five minutes in the nav computer would have helped but I was concentrating on the sailing and um, got too close and had to put in two jibes very very quickly and those two jibes gave Gutek that opportunity to come past and I ended up finishing 40 seconds behind rather than maybe 40 seconds ahead but uh, yeah that's racing that's what it's all about but I think the point's been proven the boat we can see the boat is very very fast I've kind of found the gears I've knocked the handbrake off found the boost button whatever you want to say and uh, yeah we're, I think we've got a good chance for the next leg now. So like Gudkowski and Stan were major only a few minutes before, Derek Hatfield arrived in South America to some richly deserved applause from well-wishers who had gathered on the dockside. And while they may be fierce competitors out at sea, Hatfield's three close rivals were on hand to welcome the former policeman back onto shore. Sorry, got mine. Good to see you. Hey there, Derek. <laughs> All I can say is, wow, what a, what, a, what a race, you know, like it was a NASCAR close type of stuff going on and, uh, and I loved it, you know, um, so it, uh, it was a lot of work, it wasn't as much uh, effort as leg two, it was actually a good leg, fun leg, and uh, we had a really fast uh, crossing over to the Horn, two weeks, you know, from New Zealand to, to the Horn and then fantastic rounding in the horn I had a beautiful uh, uh, weather there and flat calm and I came right, right in within a within a mile of the of the coast I spoke to the uh, keeper there and uh, it was fantastic and then of course the, the the second part of it from Cape Horn to here was more of a was actually more difficult now that all three skippers were on dry land it was time to celebrate what had been one of the closest ever finishes to a solo offshore ocean race with the fleet of Eco 60 yachts and their skippers safely in port at Punta del Este, there's just over three weeks until leg four kicks off. Ocean Sprint 4 will see Van Lu, Stanmore Major, Gutkowski and Hatfield do battle over 5,700 miles from Uruguay to Charleston on the eastern seaboard of the USA. The next leg will set sail from Punta del Este on the 27th of March.